And actor Paul Walker, who began acting as a child, then starring in the Fast and Furious films, dying in a car crash. Tonight, the last image of him alive and his fellow actors now paying tribute. ABC Cecilia Vega from the scene tonight. Just minutes after actor Paul Walker, known for his role in the blockbuster hit Fast and Furious, and his friend, pro racer Roger Rodas, drove off this. When rescue crews arrived, the fireball was still burning. Witnesses tried to put the fire out too. It was too late. Both men were pronounced dead at the scene. The red Porsche so mangled it was unrecognizable. The pole it hit bent in two, carried away this afternoon, part of an investigation that is still underway. On Saturday, the 40-year-old actor attended a toy drive-in car show. His 15-year-old daughter and Rodas's son were there too. Here's Walker looking at that Porsche in one of his last known photos. Fast and Furious co-star Tyrese Gibson was among those who came to the crash scene to grieve today as stunned friends and fans tried to make sense of the death of an actor that tragically mirrors the movies he made. For today's video, I'm going to walk you through the events that occurred November 30th, 2013. The final day of actor Paul Walker and professional driver Roger Rodas here in Valencia, California. And we're starting right now. On November 30th, 2013, Paul Walker and his charity Reach Out Worldwide were hosting a car show slash toy drive here at his other company that he partially owns called Always Evolving. This is what occurred. Paul and Roger were no strangers to car shows. Both being professional drivers, they attended car shows a lot. This particular car show was put on by Paul's charity, Reach Out Worldwide. It was a toy drive and car show featuring cars from his personal collection along with his team at Always Evolving. It was to support the victims of Typhoon Haiyan that hit the Philippines. Toward the end of the event, Paul and Roger were seen walking around the 2005 Porsche Carrera GT. They both left the event around 3.30 in the afternoon. When they were having the car show and toy drive, there were dozens of cars all out here, kids everywhere, and right over here is where the Porsche would have been sitting. There were photos online that the Porsche was sitting right here because you could see this black hand railing. And then this garage was open where you could see cars in the back. And there was a bunch of cars lined up right here. And one of the final photos of Paul Walker was him right next to the uh, Porsche there. So when the toy drive was, I wanna say it was close to being over, Paul and Roger got into the Porsche and would have drove off this way and gone down that way and made a right. For some of the people that were here, they were lucky enough to get a photo with Paul Walker, but not knowing that today was gonna be his last day, there are quite a few photos floating around the internet of him standing in this general area. You can see the water valves in the background as well. And I think there were some taken over here and his company, Always Evolving, is, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's still here. Let's see. You can see me in the background. Hey. Yeah, this is definitely the right area. And like I said, these valves, some of the photos, was him standing 
right here in this general area. And it's just crazy to think about. So I'm not gonna lie. When I was driving in, coming to this location here, I just felt really uneasy. Like, just really sad. It, that wreck should have never happened. And it just sucks. Because Paul Walker was such a good dude. Him and Roger both. And it just, it's, it's hard to explain, like, my emotions right now, like, it was hard for me to even start this video. I didn't, I can't find the words to even put together at this moment in time. And just being here, it's just, it's, it's just really, I, I, I can't even find the words for it, but it's, it's really, I'm just gonna say really emotional to be standing where your childhood hero was on the last day that he was alive. It, it hits different. For this next portion of the video, I'm gonna drive over to the crash site. It's right around the corner. I'm gonna do it in complete silence in honor of Paul and Roger. I've been to LA a few times and I visited the crash site every time I was here, but I've never actually documented it until today. So this video from here on out, the next portion of it is going to be in complete silence. Now before I get closer to the crash site, which is right there in front of the hypercell building, I want to draw your attention to this building here. This building, specifically that camera right there is the camera that caught most of the footage from the wreck. I mean, you can't really see much from this point of view because clearly there's a bunch of hedges right there and you can see one of the trees being taken down along with the light pole all right over there so the car would have been coming down the road right here. Now it's said to believe that they were doing right around 100 miles an hour. And this is a 45 mile an hour road. The Kelly Johnson Parkway and Hercules Street is where we're at. And right here is where it happened. Now there were three points of impact. And I'm gonna explain how this happened. 
the car jumped the curb, sideswiped this tree, took out this pole, and took out this tree as well. And at one point, I'm not sure if there was a telephone pole here or another tree, but the car pretty much split in two and was engulfed in flames in a matter of 60 seconds. Now, I've seen a bunch of videos and pictures online that along this curb here, people have carved and wrote, and it looks like they keep it covered up pretty, pretty decently, but you can still see some stuff. Like, I don't know what these carvings are, and there was some carvings on this too. I'm gonna go down here over to this tree really quick and show you. Underneath this tree, people have wrote all up and down, rest in peace, Paul, rest in peace, Roger, we love you. We got some little necklace here, a fuel regulator, some cars, necklaces, a lock, jewelry, stickers, and tons and tons of writing. Now right here behind me is a tree trunk, which left the one, and people have put rocks, some stickers, heart-shaped rock, four-leaf clover, and you can see on this wood right here, people have wrote, rest in peace, Paul, People have come from all over just to see this specific location. I know this pole was covered in writing also. And down here, people have carved when they replaced the cement. Can't get rid of that. But there is no, not really any writing on this pole besides right here. Rest easy. And then over on this tree right here, there's some carvings. I can see Paul right here, pressed in peace. There's like a little flower thing along with some writing. A lot of rest in peace Pauls and Rogers. Yeah, all up and down this tree. Thank you. Rest in peace, Paul. So there are multiple rumors floating around about what actually happened that day. Many people said it had rained the day before. I even read online that people said they swerved to miss a deer. But the majority of rumors and speculations all point to the faulty Porsche Carrera GT. They were traveling between 80 and 100 miles per hour on a 45 mile per hour road. The tires on the car were over nine years old. I believe there were over 2,000 Porsches made and well over 500 had been reported with some sort of issue. The curb around the area that they come from is said to be a popular drifting spot. I know I've said this a dozen times, but Paul was my childhood hero. And I will seriously admit that like for the rest of my life. And it's crazy because he touched a lot of people's hearts with what he did, not only with Reach Out Worldwide, not only in the film community, but with the car culture too. It's crazy just how one movie can inspire millions of people just from one single scene, the scene of the eclipse at Dodger Stadium. That's what really inspired so many people. And it's just, wow. Like I've heard so many stories about Paul, how much of a great person he was. And if I could seriously go back in time, I would tell them to not get in that car. If, if I could seriously go back in time, I would. But we'll see you again one day, Paul.
So I found where Paul is laid to rest, and there's currently a family there paying their respects. I'm going to give them a little bit of time. So uh, as I'm waiting around, I found something really interesting that kind of goes along with a specific subject. And if you guys remember the movie Too Fast, Too Furious, starring Paul, obviously, the director, John Singleton, is buried not too far from Paul, just in the courtyard over from him. And check this out. As I was walking over here, I noticed John Singleton's final resting place. It's been, what, four years? Yeah. The director, Too Fast, Too Furious. So right up there is the back of the Hollywood side. That's the uh, tower right there. But Paul is laid to rest right over here. Despite the unfortunate events that occurred November 30th, I want to talk a little bit about Paul's life. He was born in Glendale, California. His mother, Cheryl, was a fashion model. His father was a sewer contractor and former amateur boxer, two-time Golden Gloves. He was raised as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. He has four younger siblings, Amy, Ashley, Caleb, and Cody. He attended various schools throughout his life while majoring in marine biology. He lived in Santa Barbara with his dogs and he and Rebecca, his girlfriend at one time, had a little girl together named Meadow Rain Walker. Paul's only daughter, she lived with her mother for 13 years in Hawaii, then moved to California in 2011 to live with Paul. Vin Diesel is her godfather. Aside from acting, Paul created Reach Out Worldwide, or RO. If you're unfamiliar, it's a nonprofit organization that travels to disaster stricken areas to supply relief. He also was a huge lover of the ocean. He loved to surf. And at one point, he was featured on Expedition Great White on National Geographic. He spent 11 days capturing and tagging seven great white sharks. He was also a car enthusiast. He was a professional driver and owned around 30 cars, a portion he shared with Roger Rodas. 21 vehicles owned and sold in January of 2020 for a combined total of $2.3 million. He was in the middle of filming Furious 7 when he passed away. He was on a short break from filming and he was scheduled to return to Atlanta that following week. Universal announced a hiatus on the production, leaving the question on how to continue without him. He was cremated and that's something that I didn't know and his ashes are buried here at the cemetery. Paul's father filed a wrongful death claim against Roger Rodas' estate, seeking the return of or proportionate share of revenue generated by all the cars that Paul and Roger both owned. In September 2015, Meadow filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Porsche, claiming it had numerous defects. Porsche denied all wrongdoings and blamed Paul and Roger for their behavior knowing the risks involved. The judge ruled in favor of Porsche and they settled for a $10 million out of court settlement. Paul's father also reached an out of court settlement for his lawsuit as well. That's in 2016. Roger Rodas' widow, Christine, also tried to file a lawsuit against Porsche and the judge ruled in favor of Porsche for her case as well. For the last five years, Paul's younger brother, Cody, has been teaming up with Paul's charity, Reach Out Worldwide along with the longtime friend Tyrese Gibson putting on a car show called Fuel Fest. All proceeds go to Reach Out Worldwide. Originating in 2018, they started with the In Memory of Paul car show. I was fortunate enough to attend that one and it was a great turnout. Now it's evolved into Fuel Fest, hosting shows across the US and even overseas. Be sure to check it out if you ever get the chance. I highly recommend it. I've been to LA twice already, and both times I was out here, I came and visited Paul. Now on my third trip out here, I've been out here a week. I flew in last Friday evening, and it was pretty late, 
So Saturday morning, the first thing I did was drive all the way up here to see Paul. It's the first thing I do when I get here. And today is Thursday afternoon. I fly out tomorrow morning and I wanted this to be the very last thing that I do before I leave to say goodbye to Paul before I head home. Now, when I was out here on Saturday, just this past weekend, there was a little toy car on top of the ledge here. Now, I'm not gonna say that somebody stole it, but maybe the groundskeepers removed it. I'm not entirely sure, but there is a rose right there. We got some coins. People have definitely come out here to pay their respects. So you may notice in a lot of my videos that I wear this specific black necklace. It does have somewhat of significant meaning to me, but I'm out here and I really want to leave something from myself to leave for Paul. And I think I'm gonna leave my necklace here. I'm gonna put my necklace right over here on this little, little teeny tiny branch. I remember where I was at the day that I heard about Paul's passing. I just got home from work. It was a long day. I got home at about 11, quarter after 11. I was working a late shift. And um, as soon as I got home, I was talking to my dad and turned it on the news. And I saw the news reports from various different channels that Paul Walker had passed away. So if it was 11 o'clock my time back in Ohio, it would have been like 8, 7.30, 8 o'clock-ish here. So it was pretty, pretty recent that I had heard about it and I didn't want to believe it at the time and I was so devastated. I legit like sat up for hours just thinking about what the heck had happened. And when I saw the trailer for Furious, Furious 7, I didn't know how it was gonna play out, how they were gonna figure out how to go on without him because he passed away like 70% through that movie. And I just, when the movie finally came out in theaters, I hadn't gone to see it yet, but I had heard what happened at the end of it, where they do the um, See You Again song, you know, the For Paul thing. Somebody had leaked that and put it on YouTube. Well, I ended up watching it, and let me tell you, I legit started crying because I had lost my childhood hero. And it's, it really hits home to be here, standing right next to where your childhood hero is laid to rest. It's definitely an uneasy experience. It makes me like really upset. If I could go back in time, the first thing I would do was tell him not to get in that car. I think everybody could agree that we would all go back and stop him from getting in that car. He had such a an awesome life with what he was doing with Reach Out Worldwide, you know, helping all the victims of the disaster reliefs. And he was just an amazing person. His life was cut way too short, including Roger Rodas. And I'm I wanna I wanna I'm trying to think like what the Fast and Furious movies would be like today if he was still alive somehow. Like, where would they be? Do you, do you guys think that those movies would be different if Paul was still with us today? I wanna show you guys exactly how much of an impact that Paul Walker had on my life. 
Fast and the Furious came out in 2001. I was nine years old. Flash forward to today, I am now 30 years old. It is 2023. And the movie means so much to me. Not too long after I found out that he had passed away, I wanted to do something special in honor of him. Because I love the movie and him being my childhood hero, I went and got this tattooed on my arm. It's the first race from the first movie. And underneath it says, dude, I almost had you. I really went and got a tattoo of the movie on my arm. That's dedication. And all of us fans can agree that he was an awesome guy and he inspired like thousands if not millions of people not only in the film world but in car culture automotive industry and and just he had such an impact on so many people it's crazy i know this is a video about paul but i don't want people to get the wrong idea that i'm doing this for myself I am definitely not. I'm just telling you guys what Paul meant to me growing up as a kid and still does today. So I don't want people to think that this video is all about me because it is really not. It is all out of respect for Paul and Roger Rodas. I was first introduced to the Fast and the Furious franchise from my brother. I remember being downstairs in the basement and I think I was like playing with the basketball or doing something. And he come in and he had this movie and I'll never forget it. I sat down and watched this movie and he said, you have to wait until the end of the movie because there's a really good race and there's a charger and a super race at the end of it. I said, okay. So I watched the entire movie. Before I got to the end of the movie, let me just tell you, that the opening scene of the eclipse at Dodger Stadium, when Brian goes to test out his car, I was instantly hooked right in. That car is such an iconic car. I remember going to school <laughs> and doodling in my notebook, trying to draw the car. I mean, obviously it wasn't that great, but that movie definitely, definitely has inspired me. And still to this day, is one of my all-time favorite movies and that's pretty much pretty much how I got hooked in and then two years later I remember the release of Too Fast Too Furious now my best friend at the time we were um, really excited because we had watched the first one together and I remember going to the movie theater like at least two or three times to see Too Fast Too Furious I was instantly drawn into that one because a I love Miami and two, it's the second Fast and the Furious, obviously. So the lights, the cars, everything about that movie, I just loved. And I started collecting the little die cast too at the time. And I think I had, um, I had the Evo, um, Challenger, Charger, Supra, Civic, the Eclipse. I had a whole bunch of stuff just because I love these movies so much. I started my own little collection because of this guy here. So it's into this day. I, I still collect die cast cars and I, I rep rep shirts all the time, like reach out worldwide shirts or shirts that have him on the back of them or a quote that he says or just something. I live, I live through these movies vicariously and it's such an awesome experience because I know that there are so many people out there just like me who feel the same exact same way also on another note I remember when CDs were a thing <laughs> and I remember being on the bus in like third grade and I have my little disc disc player thing and I had my headphones in and I would have both soundtracks to the Fast and the Furious. I'd have the one that's got 
the Ja Rule song on it, the Furious song, and then the one that has um, the Superstar song by Saliva. There was two different CDs, soundtracks, for that movie, and I took both of them to school and listened to them on the bus each and every day. As I was getting ready to leave, I had noticed that the bushes on the wall here kind of look like angel wings. This is definitely, definitely an ironic thing because Paul is an angel. He's looking down on all of us, making sure we're all okay. All right, Buster, it's time for me to get home. Hopefully I'll be back very soon to see you again. And hopefully it won't take me five years to get back here. So I'll see you again, buddy. Okay, so now I'm up here in the Forest Lawn Glendale Cemetery, not to be confused with the Hollywood Hills Cemetery. This one is in Glendale. And I'm visiting the final resting place of Roger Rodas, who is the driver in the tragic accident with Paul Walker. I wanna show you where he is laid to rest at. It actually took me a minute to find, but once I did find it, it's rather easy. There's a statue of Michelangelo's David just beyond the walls over there. If you come over here, this is right where Roger is laid to rest at. Not too hard to find, right here off the, the side. Roger Wilson Rodas. Beloved husband, daddy, son, brother, uncle, and friend, the love of my life. Roger loved life and lived each moment to the fullest. He had the courage to dream and make his dreams into a reality. He was always evolving. He fulfilled our lives with fun, laughter, and great memories. Roger will forever be in our hearts. A lot of people overlook Roger when it comes to what happened that day because of Paul's fame. Well, I'm here to share a little bit about Roger Rodas' life. He was a 38-year-old man who loved his family. He was married and had two kids. He was also a financial planner. He was a managing director of wealth management for the Bank of America. He also loved racing. He met Paul at a California race club. He was driving a Porsche previously owned by Paul and they even teamed up at one point for the Pro-Am 25 hour endurance race. He created a racing shop called Always Evolving in Los Angeles. He was the captain and Paul was listed as a driver for the team. He also had a charity of his own, raising money for orphans and widows in El Salvador. Then him and Paul created Reach Out Worldwide, a network of first responders to help after natural disasters. All right, everybody, I'm gonna end things here. First off, rest in peace, Paul Walker. Secondly, rest in peace, Roger Rodas. You are always in our hearts. We're gonna miss you, we love you. So with that being said, I'm gonna end things here, guys. Um, like, subscribe, comment, and share. Let me know what Paul meant to you in the comment section, if he's inspired you. I'm sure he's inspired you know thousands if not millions of people so i want to hear your story down in the comment section so as i said before i'm going to end things here keep it fast keep it furious but always keep it safe take care guys i'll see you on the next one